Enjoy. And welcome to a very special podcast, guys. You live, everybody. You live. We appreciate all the love life guy, fans. Guy over there screaming, "You live!" And it just reminds me, like how beautiful it is that that you know, Love Line's a show devoted to like human, mental, and emotional health. Yeah. And our greeting is all based around a guy holding a gun to a woman's head while she blows him. And he's like, "Yeah, you live, bitch." Well, tell this. Tell the story. We got. We'll, we'll do a little history here. We'll do a. We'll get calls. We'll get question calls. Questions from you guys. So we got a lot of cool friends here. We appreciate yeah. you all showing up. The KBC fans, the Love Life fans, our friends and family. Thank you to the improv. Samantha Shocker in the front row. Look at Sam. Yeah, Sam. Sam right in the front row. More importantly, her husband. Who are? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we were starting the show one day, and Mike goes, yes, like that. And I go, what the hell is that? Why do you do that? Why do you do that? And I said, boogie nights. Well, what do you mean? I said, oh, okay. So Dirk Diggler's getting a little long in the tooth, and he's been hitting the, the, the blow a little too hard. So he's not holding up to his end of the bargain as a performer. There's no boogie nights, right? Yeah. Okay, all right. So he gets replaced by the new up-and-coming kid, yeah. you know? And they're showing a clip from one of his movies, and he, he has a gun to this lady's head, and she's blowing him. And he says, uh, yes, bitch, yes, you live, you live. <laughs> and so what we, can, what we can deduce from that is that he had to decide whether or not her fellatio was good enough for him not to shoot her in the top of the head. And, and he says, you live, bitch, yes! <laughs> Which I found out from a, from a weird podcast uh, where they were interviewing all the actors and producers and stuff from Boogie Nights that that, was a, that whole thing was improv. And I, so really? wherever that actor is, somewhere, someplace. And then You Live became the greeting for Loveline. Those yeah. of you KBC listeners wonder what the hell we're talking about. You Live became... Well, my wife signed off on it because she said, if you don't know the backstory, it's really like this really positive, affirming thing to hear, you know? <laughs> it's like Aloha. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Except you live. From a horrible backstory. Um, speaking of that backstory, there was another Boogie Night uh, sort of chapter with Loveline, which is kind of funny. In the Corolla days. Oh, this is the best. It was a good story. Uh, Corolla days, uh, Heather Graham was on there. She was in a film. We didn't know who she was, and she was in a film with two other guys. And it was a film that went immediately to, back in the day, to, to, that day, to VHS. Yeah. It went right to VHS. It was never released or anything. And uh, Adam was sort of kicking back to a commercial, and he looks at Heather Graham and goes, hey, you seem like a talented girl. You're an attractive girl. What, what's, up with your, what, what's up with your career? And she goes, uh, well, I'm in a movie. Uh, it's coming. I'm kind of excited about it. It's about the porn industry in the 70s. It stars Burt Reynolds and Marky Mark. Was, we were like, Burt Reynolds and Marky Mark? This is like 97. Yeah. We're like, what? Burt Reynolds? I've never been heard from in 20 years. Yeah. And, oh, uh, yeah, we're roller skates the entire film. What, what are you going to do? And uh, Adam's like, oh, for God's sakes, you need a new agent. Who's your manager? For yeah. God. And who, who, who's directing this film? He's 27. He hasn't really done anything else. This is his debut film. So, I mean, I can totally support the Ace Man on that one. And I'm sure he was very supportive and loving in the way he who, delivered I, it. I don't even know who the director was. Who was it? Paul Thomas Anderson. There you go. All right. So uh, Mike was planning to uh, offend everybody today. That's, not, that's so – that's hurtful. But and truthful. it's devilish. Truthful. Gary said the same thing for, before he got started. He's like, oh, I'm sure the three-minute countdown before Mike grosses everybody out. And I said, well, that's just not fair. It's, it's hurtful. What did you tell me upstairs before we got out here? What did I tell you? Wait, about, oh, about girls? Okay, so I would, <laughs> you know, like, you hang around with guys and girls have this idea of locker room talk that it's descriptive. And it's really not. It's not very detailed. In fact, that's you ladies who will describe everything that goes on in the bedroom and how big or small certain things are and how good or bad a guy is at that. Guys don't really do that. What they do do is discuss various women that they've either ever met or have seen or know. from. And you see a girl at the gym, you're like, would you fuck her? And uh, I'm like, yeah. But would you fuck her has gone way... Like, there's, it, there's no use for it anymore for the Mikester because I've literally fucked a hole in a wall. Like... <laughs> The, the figure of speech of he would fuck a hole in the wall. I fucked a hole in a wall. I put peanut butter in a brick in, in fucking drywall, and I fucked it. Why? <laughs> so, 
I was living in an apartment, like a like a, 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 a um what is it? studio apartment. Okay, so one room, the pisser was next to the sink, and often the two would get you know interchanged. Um, <laughs> And it was four grown men. I was 19. The rest of the guys were like grown men. They're my age now. And uh, one time, one time a guy brought a girl over. And we had to clean the floor with a rake. That was how gross that place was. It was disgusting. So we inevitably were getting evicted. And, of course, we're not getting any type of uh, security deposit back. So we were like, let's fuck this place up. So we were doing, we were, a guy was filming it. And we were fucking the place up. And uh, I started putting my dick in stuff. And the more and more people laughed at me, the more kind of brazen I would get. And I started, I fucked my own Converse All-Star shoe. And then I put my penis in a jar of peanut butter. And then in the many holes in the wall, I took some of that peanut butter and I put it in the wall and then got up into it. Yeah. So anyway, the terminology or the question, would you hit it? Would you bang her? Or whatever the parlance of the given day. Meaningless to me because I, I fuck anything. Um, so I had to start thinking of ways to decide what is my Mendoza line. And it is, uh, it, is, it is oral activity to the bunghole. That means a girl's special. Like she's got to have a lot going on for me to, to pull that one off. And, and uh, I was thinking like if a girl's hot enough for me to do that, what in her personal life could make me back that train up? And Kill her kids? Ver- Killer kids, no fucking way. Okay, uh, um, um, shoot the president. Casey Anthony wouldn't even slow me down. She, I'd be like, I would. I probably want to ask some questions, but shoot, shoot the president. Shoot the president, but like, is he? I mean, he's already dead, right? Like, I mean, we're not bringing him back. No. Okay. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I mean, if she's hot enough, so, so I don't want the president to get shot. But I mean, like, if it's already happened and she's hot enough, that's not slowing me down. But one thing that I, I thought of was was shitty butt, and if a girl because. Even a haggard ass chick, like a war torn beaver, like the uh, uh, pubes popping out the top. Most women are not gonna have even a remnant of that. They're the poo poo because girls are girls and they'd like take better care of. Them. So if a girl has shitty butt, it means you gotta like really overthink it. You gotta think, wow, what's going on in this girl's life that she would be so inconsiderate to leave poo nuggets? I mean, is she ill? Is she a hoarder? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. It, it just occurs to me. Does she not know there's poo? Or does she know there's poo and that she just doesn't care even though my face is down there? What's worse? I mean, the whole, the whole thing's a mess. Psychologically, that's one thing. I don't care how hot, a chick, how hot a chick was. I'd have to back that train right up. So then why do you text me horrible pictures about poo every day? It's funny you should say that. KBC's own Jillian Barbary and I were talking about it. Jillian's here. Be, thank Jillian for supporting us. I was talking about my new favorite, uh, my new favorite human in the world that uh, Tosh introduced me to is uh, Doctor Pimple Poppers, and she's a real MD that just pops shit yeah. and she puts it up on online, and I, I, I'm riveted by it, but it grosses me out. And I always thought about how it's such a guy, uh, a girl thing. Like my sister, my wife, my ex-wife, my mom, they will all like dive to like a, like a like a fumbled football to get to a pimple if they can pop it. You know, uh. like women love that for some reason. No, but, not, not so much down here. No, no, no. no. Okay, good, not good. Uh, I'm glad that there's <laughs> still still some decorum amongst the females in the world. Um, but I'm not I'm not like intrigued to know what's going on in the lives of someone getting a sebaceous cyst pop because it's just it's just a dude who happened to get a cyst right. and he's at the doctor. You find me a video of a guy pooing in another guy's mouth. I go, man, like you know, there's well, got there can't be making that much money. So he likes this. What? <laughs> What's going on in his mind? Like, that guy's just straight dookie to the dome. And like, I'm looking at that happen on Earth. Like, what? You know what I'm saying? Like, it, I need to know. I need, and maybe because you've spent so much time exploring the human condition, yeah. that, you're behind that. That's behind you. I'm still No, riveted. we're having it right now. Okay. <laughs> it's happening right this That's second. That's it. And also, you have zeroed in on exactly the type of pictures that you hate the most. Which, in turn, are the pictures I send you. <laughs> Sam, you, you must hate the same pictures because you get the same ones. I hate your pictures. Yeah. Sam hates my pictures, but... I asked funny his wife, thing. why does he do that? I couldn't figure it out. She goes, he just let you know he's thinking about you. <laughs> it's true. Like, there's... Your, your wife has the rosiest ideas about how you work. Well, no. What, she the, converts the great everything thing you do into something positive. <laughs> the great thing about my wife, uh, amongst many things... Me, Bianca... 
Kyla, the great Bianca Kyla. Yeah. Cause my, Mike's my wife's no, my wife's awesome. I'm I'm the luckiest guy in the world. But one of the amazing things out of the many about my wife is that I was thinking about it's like uh, when you watch movies about um, couples and one of them develops Alzheimer's or yeah. develops like ALS. The the other spouse learns how to alter their life to better suit the person that's sick. That's what happened to your wife when she married yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like over over yeah. three years, she's like she's yeah. really gotten to she she doesn't react in the same way she would react with another human. She goes, oh, I have or, to think or, about it how Mike thinks about it, and she's really very accommodating in that way. And like I said, there's a good spin to everything. <laughs> Uh, well, now I've realized that essentially nothing of the last 10 minutes can be used for either podcast or KABC. Mm. So perhaps perhaps we should bring in the podcast. Sure. <laughs> so I wanted to, uh, for people that don't know, I want to get a little bit into your history. Girl, you know, oh, oh, great. Is that, I thought you wanted to get into the podcast. What, what is that? Poo Poo Paris. You want to hear Poo Poo Paris? We'll, all right, we'll tell the Poo Poo Paris there. We'll get into that. But 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 people don't really. I mean, you're so great as you sit here and you're healthy and you're you know taking care of yourself. People don't really know your backstory so much. Yeah, it, it, you and I know it, and, and you talk about it, you allude to it, but it's never really been told systematically. Yeah, I and well, and I mean, I guess it, you could look at it as a positive, or you could look at it as a negative. But I, I do a lot of thinking about the idea of being really open and transparent on the air. And oftentimes I end up focusing on some of the more comical stories. Entertaining, about, yeah, yeah. Yeah, about my using and drinking. And it, I think it's a double-edged sword. I do it because it's better radio than, yeah. to, oh, there was the time that I was slicing my arm because I, uh, I hated myself. No one wants to hear that. But, oh, I also, but tonight we do. But I also think about it's kind of a defense mechanism in a way that I don't want to be so reflective about the things that I still have uh, residual inside myself from those days, and when I talk about things that are a little bit more serious, it it almost forces me to then be a little bit more introspective about the things that I still are. You, you, you say know. it makes you do more work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. And, yeah. And so you started using when you were a kid. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I was too crazy at as far as like early age. I I started. Drinking beers and stuff and smoking cigarettes, like probably around the same time everyone, you know, and, and you had some early problem. high school. And I remember I tuned in on one time. You had a, like a, you were nearly drowned or something and beaten up by a bunch oh, of Oh, yeah. Dudes. That was before using, too. Right. Like well, a group of dudes beat me up, but like in, in the midst of beating me up, they like they were holding me under the water. And yeah. I, I think that I, I think that was a trauma that it motivated some of the initial using. Yeah, no, I don't yeah. know why. I mean, I'll that I'll, and, the, and the succubus. Yeah, the succubus fucked me up for sure. Well, talk about that. Well, sexual abuse in total was way more hurt. I think, I don't know, I can't speak for all men, but I know for me, there was almost, I was very courageous in many ways in diving right into a lot of my character flaws and inadequacies and things that made me feel very insecure. Anything revolving around sex, I almost, I just said to myself, well, <laughs> it's banging chicks, man. Who, uh, that's not traumatic. You know, it's a feather in my How cap. I don't have to... Yeah. really analyze that and certainly now that i'm a, a father and a father of a woman uh, a little girl she didn't come out as a woman that would have been amazing that'd been weird that'd been weird. like hey what's up dad <laughs> um it, it, it has forced me to really like there's no ifs ands or buts not open for debate that mm. the sexual trauma in in all different ways was probably the most harmful thing to me well, than the anything. stories about if, you know older uh, female teachers acting out on 17 16 year yeah. old males you were the object of something like that uh, well yeah but i'm <laughs> that's giving this the mustachioed succubus a lot of credit <laughs> for those of you who don't know what i'm talking about i i had my virginity taken by a 19 year old mustachioed woman uh when i was <laughs> almost just about to turn 14 i was i was thir like 13 and I totally, like, it was consensual in the sense that I wanted it in the moment and I didn't say no, but I didn't realize till it was over how bad that was for me, you know? Like, I, I in fact, it, I was so charged up. I was so girl crazy, and I so wanted to have sex. But after that happened, I didn't even tell anyone, even my closest friends, until I was, I, th I opened up about it on Love Line. I was like 30. They talk about you know, it on the so radio. I'm like, well, that's sexual abuse, dude. You're like... No, it isn't. I was thirteen and a horny. Yeah. No, it was sexual abuse. Yeah, no, and uh, like your your my brain was like a little marble of 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 clay. You know, it can't handle stuff like that. Well, so and so you had using and using and using, and yeah. ac across to that, uh, there was a experience you had in Paris. You yeah, see, that's 
See, that stuff's funny. I mean, it really is. Like, I'm so, but I'm so lucky that I didn't end up like in a Ukrainian hostel with like my leg being cured for meat, you know, in the back room. I was, I was, uh, I was probably like 18. I just got out of high school. 18? I I was. This experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's ballsy to go do it. You will tell the story. I mean, listen, 98 to like 2002 is all one monolithic like mesh of, of crazy little flickers of memory. I don't know. I could have been 20, but I, I was right out of high school. It, it's somewhere in that ballpark. And I was like, I'm going to be like Jack Kerouac. I'm taking off. I don't have any money and clothes. I'm going to Europe. And, uh, <laughs> you know, like, which is so funny because I'm like this suburbanite spoiled kid, like a, a, acting like I'm, you know, heading west during the Dust Bowl, you know, like, All right, I'm going to go about, you know, live off the land. So I did. I put like just backpack and shit, and I fly to England. Little did I, I didn't have anywhere to stay. I didn't know anybody. So I get to England. You, and you were poor parents the whole time. I'm thinking, oh my god, your mom. Oh my god. Oh yeah, my but I, we talked about this. You have three magnificent children with a lot of great achievements already at age what? Twenty four, twenty three. Yeah, twenty three. Okay, and they have their whole life, and they their standards for their own life are probably so high. I, I my parents have... were happy if I fucking tied my shoes. You know, like <laughs> there is that relief. You know, that came with. So I get on this plane, and I, I land in England, and I'm like, well, what am I going to do? I was already shit-faced. I went, I s- smoked meth and went to Disneyland the day before and didn't sleep all the way up to the flight. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> I didn't know that part. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just a, a mess. And I get into Heathrow, and I was like, I remember from my punk rock documentaries that Piccadilly Circus is where all the punks are. It's probably where all the drugs are. So I go to Piccadilly Circus, and uh, I'm drinking in a pub for like an hour before I talk to some locals, and they're like, oh, you want some ecstasy? Yeah, I got ecstasy. So I ended up buying a bunch of ecstasy. Well, the guy and, convinced you that you could sell yeah, it. Yeah, he's like, oh, you listen here, mate. You bought 200 pills. It's been much better for you, mate. It's all right. And I was like, all right, sure. I'll buy 200 pills. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm going to be the uh, – I'm going to be like – the, the the kingpin. Oh yeah, the party, but, but party I saw myself as like like Diamond Jim Brady, like uh, you know walking through England, just like making it rain ecstasy <laughs> as people follow by me. I just started eating them and like handing them out to chicks that I wanted to fuck. And so <laughs> I'm there and I buy this ecstasy, and this guy uh, takes some of my ecstasy. I take some of this ecstasy. I'm way out of my mind, drunk and high. Uh, I'm getting everybody in this little pub high. And I, uh, the only thing I re- clearly remember is this stupid pub had like bowling, but on the, on the bar top. Have you ever seen it? was like, it was like real bowling. They had, but it was like a racquetball sized ball. Wow. And, and you just sit there all hammer and you're like trying to hit these little pins. So we're doing that. I'm just a mess. And, uh, some other locals are like, you're missing out. If you, uh, you're into Coke, right? And I was like, yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> this is like 99, 98. Oh, well, the, the coke scene in, in England, it's bunk, man. Where it's at is Paris. And I'm like, huh, who's in to go on the channel? So I don't know what time of day it is. We get on the train. You haven't slept in like three days. Oh, this fuck far. that. So I head to Paris. <laughs> I head to Paris. We get there, and I, that's when I really start not remembering anything. But we buy some, we buy some uh, cocaine, and I teach French people how to make crack, which I feel like is a great... <laughs> And a great ambassador type thing to do. And, and we're a total bootleg. It's like I, we have this ornate setup of me, you know, setting up my chemistry set to show them how to make. And I don't even know how to say baking soda in French. And I mean, we're making all these rocks. And then we end up smoking it out of a uh, Coke light can because that's what Diet Coke is over there. And so we're smoking crack. And uh, we go to this club. It's like I, an episode of Orange is the New Black. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> we go to this club. I believe it was called Absinthe because they were serving Absinthe, but oh, that was the name of the club. Fantastic. And uh, I don't remember shit after that, okay? <laughs> I wake up. I don't know how much longer later. Could have been days. Could have been hours. And I'm in the hallway of a hotel. Way too nice of a hotel for me to immediately know, even in that state. I'm like, I'm not staying here. Not a hotel you'd ever seen before. No, no. I, I, this is all new to me, and I wake up. Don't I'm know on, it's day or night. You know, I'm on the floor. <laughs> even, okay, even in the best of situations, I think we've all been there where you, you have a little too much, you party a little too much, maybe you're out of sleep. If you wake up face down somewhere, even if it's in your own home, you're like, whoa. <laughs> whoa, because it's like you traveled time. You know, you don't remember yeah. getting to the floor. You're just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> So I, I, I get up, and then I realize I don't have any clothes on except for my boxers. And I'm like, well, this is a bad situation. I better find... 
and I take one step and I realize that these boxers are full of shit. <laughs> so you're, you're, we've left a piece out. You're roided out. Yeah. You st- roided out of my mind. Roided out a 19 year old in his boxers. Stupid tattoos in everywhere. In the city. He can barely remember where he is. The building has no idea where it is. Yeah. And naked with shit full of shit, shit in my pants. Shit in your pants. <laughs> What'd you do? So I go to the elevator. I just remember thinking, don't be people in this elevator. <laughs> sure enough, this opens up. Japanese couple. I was like, I'll wait for the next one. So, and so then I wait for a couple. Of, I finally, I had to realize that there's going to be people in all these elevators. So I just minimized my damage and got in. Put my, I walked in like this. Because <laughs> I didn't, you know, didn't want to see poo-poo butt. So I got in the lobby. Lobby's beautiful and it's bright as bright as bright can be. There's never been brighter sun. You could be on Mercury. Well, there's a weird th- thing you get after you come up cocaine. Things yeah, yeah, bright. Yeah. There's never so. been a brighter sun ever. You could be literally in the uh, the sun and you'd be like, "Well, like, come on, let's tone it down a bit." Um, and so I was like freaking out. I sit sit in the lobby like this and I'm scared. Naked. No, I mean, I'm in underwear. Shit filled. But it's August. It's it's like August in Europe. It was hot enough that was it wasn't it a busy that lobby. Crazy. Busy lobby. Yeah, but lobby? like, don't. It wasn't Grand Central Station, right. I, and it was a, for a beautiful hotel. It wasn't a big lobby. It was kind of All like right. narrow. Okay. So I'm sitting there looking out these floor to ceiling glass windows and doors that lead out to like really the bustling center of Paris. And it's daytime. I'm like Rue. It's daytime. Sa- yeah, yeah. Daytime. Oh yeah, it's daytime. And it's like Rue de Saint Germain. I'm like in a pretty like populous part. So I just book it out. And I said, I'm going to... There's got to be someone I, I recognize or that recognizes me eventually. Eventually. I mean, because I, I'm starting to go have these like catastrophist thoughts like, fuck recognize people. I don't have a passport. You know, I don't have, you don't have money. You have nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, where am I going with this, you know? Where this am I? day one. Did you, sure, thinking, did you recognize the... <laughs> you think? Yeah. Did you recognize the neighborhood or anything? Yes. Okay. Like, it's all seemingly kind of normal. So after I sit there for a while, I finally um, work up enough uh, courage to just start walking. And I gave myself a self-imposed wedgie so that it wouldn't be too obvious that I had shit in my pants. <laughs> and uh, and it, it, like, my saving grace was as hot as balls. So it wasn't crazy that there was a guy in boxers. And it was the 90s, so my boxers were like down to <laughs> right here. Um, and you roided out. So yeah, like, hey, everybody. <laughs> I, look, look at me. I've got my friend with has a minotaur tattooed on my chest with a big cock. So... Um, Do you have that? Oh, I have my, f- my friend Ryan is a minotaur, a fat minotaur, balding minotaur here. And instead of a spear, he has a bottle of champagne. <laughs> and then, and then I have my other friend as uh, as uh, Minitweak, which is a tweaking minotaur who's okay. all skinny. Of Never course, mind. but he has a big, so funny, big wiener. Um, so I see this play. I'm like, that's where I need to go. That is totally somewhere I recognize. So I go in. Dude behind the counter is like, hey, speaks perfect English. French guy, but he was like perfect English. And he's like, hey. I was like, yeah. Uh, can you help me out here? He's like, oh, you're, you're, you're here. This guy, second floor, second on the right. And I'm like, okay. So he gives me a key, a big, big wooden, almost like a gas station bathroom key, like a big fucking paddle on it, you know, to make sure you don't steal it. I get down, I get to the door, and I'm having one of these, like, like I, I, you could have convinced me that someone's filming this because it was like, this is your life <laughs> unfolding. Right. So I get close to the door, and I, I'm like, what is going to be on the other side of this? I turn, and I see the door is ajar. Okay, so, so there's only open. one type of lock, and it's one of those, like, U-bolts that yeah. you can put. And I have put, or someone has put the U-bolt in the door jam to keep it open. I'm like, oh, man. I go like, I open it up. There's, no exaggeration, 50 plastic wine cups. Like, they were wine glasses, but they were, they were cheapo disposable. Yeah. Some of them have lipstick on them. Some of them don't. Some of them have... There's beer cans. There's crack paraphernalia. <laughs> All this stuff. And I'm like, whoa. Oh, my God. And I look. And it was a very small... It's like a hostel type room. There's a bed, a little bed. All my clothes... Every all my luggage, my passport, everything perfectly folded and like set up as if I was going for a swim. <laughs> you know, like like just totally normal. Maybe that's what you thought. Maybe and you so were out I was for thinking to myself, like, oh my! Not only did I have a bunch of people in here, and I don't speak a lick of French. Uh, a lot of them were women, and then I decided at some point, whether or not they were here or not, like I'm gonna get my clothes off and shit my pants and go for. <laughs> 
go for like a scenic tour of Paris. I have a feeling you were going to go for a swim because you went to another hotel probably looking for a pool. Oh, no. I probably was following a girl. I, if, okay. I, if I had to guess. Yeah, you're right. Like nothing. F- go for a swim. I grew up in L.A. Like am I really that desperate for a right. fucking swimming well, pool? You were, you were, like, you you know were what I'm cracked saying? out like, of your mind, dude. I'm probably like, oh, oh, yeah, I'll go with you. <laughs> hey, uh, look at the shitty pants, boy. <laughs> look at the fucking stupid shitty pants American. He thinks he's going to fuck me. <laughs> They really are all fat and arrogant. (laughs) All right. I think it's time we brought out our portable mic here. Gary, uh, you guys all recognize Gary from the Corolla Network? Gary, producer Gary. Uh, Those of you that are podcast fan of that, do check out Adam and Drew's show. We're back. uh, He and I are back together in a little bit, too. Where are you, Gary? Right here. All right. Yeah, that helps me. Over (laughs) by the door. (laughs) He's over there by the two doors. Anybody wants to ask us questions, interact, this is the time to start that process. There's a hand over here, Gary, if you can see wherever you are. Gary. Yes. Gary Smith sounds like he's in witness protection. <laughs> I'm Gary uh, uh, Smith. All right, here we go. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Dan. I'm probably the oldest person here by about uh, you 20 don't... years. Dr. Drew's 83 years old. You don't know. I used to watch the you and Adam on the Corolla show. And there was a young lady on there with you. <laughs> well, we had different young ladies. We okay. had uh, well, Farmer Electra. Chris? Are we I, I'm not sure which one it was. She was on there often. She's the only person I have ever heard tell the truth about size of a man. And, and what, pray tell, did she say? She said <laughs> that big was the problem small was not the problem well (laughs) I don't think I am the only woman who agrees with that and uh, that actually is something that as those of you that love line fans we discussed that quite a bit if you remember Mm -hmm. and we got way more calls about too big than too small Oh. Way more. Way more. Uh, ah. And with the guys that would call about not being big enough or whatever, we would always remind them of that. Now, Good. Okay. I also like how the guys who would call, and, I, and they'd be like, I, I need to be bigger. I feel very small in the pants. Yeah. I go, what, 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 are, you, what are you working with? And they're like, oh, I'm, I'm uh, nine so, and a half inches. Yeah, yeah. And they're always like, <laughs> well, double actually, my dick. Actually, it's actually long is fine. But but you got to It's about this is, this It's about girth. That's the problem. That's really and all the I one have black to guy say, stands up. I'm He's sure like you, you speak like this up. Woo! All right. Girth and length. I agree. Oh, I've seen marks, isn't it? <laughs> So now you want to talk to her husband? I, uh, and yeah, I mean, if you ladies are worrying about Dr. Drew's um, appendage, uh, <laughs> Dr. Drew's wife is a young lady in traction in the back of the room. If you notice, so, the, the one she has these the uh, permanent point, stirrups on with the, pla- but the plaster point of being, Paris casts point around not, her. Of what? I'm not worried being. about Dr. Drew's wife. I'm not worried about that. There you go. So so. No, the, 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 I I forget it. (laughs) But I have a feeling for the the same people that are, um, both, for both genders, the people that are really after the major size, I don't even think it's sexual as much as it's like this phallic. Well, it becomes almost a fetish, almost kind of a fetishistic thing. Because I would love, I would love like a free circus dick, but like for a day. I wouldn't even want to bang chicks with it. I just want to be like looking at myself like, that's right, you know? (laughs) (laughs) I remember. I remember one time I performed at a at a Kevin and Bean show as Gene Simmons, and like, but they had a professional makeup artist do the whole like real Gene Simmons makeup and the wig, and I wore the big boots. And I have to say, like, I felt way more confident and cool, you know, because yeah. you have this over the top persona. It, doesn't, it yeah. doesn't apply to regular life, but I have to feel like if you had like just some circus wiener, um, <laughs> that's the same thing. Like, you probably know in your own mind that this is not pleasurable to most women, but man. 
like, look at the confidence that I yield. Good for you. Thank you. Next question. But I, I would still say that some women do like that size thing, and they shouldn't be apologizing. For yeah, that but, size. okay, that, it's a biological thing. It's not, it's not, you know, just coincidence that most black guys like women with big asses. It's because black guys' wieners are so big, they need women with enough cushion to grommet away... <laughs> The, like they like they need enough like a like a like a like a spacer because if a girl had a flat ass and you're just going straight love oh, spacer oh, oh, it would just it would fucking drill her you need that you need that like Kardashian pillow to keep you safe I want to get a girl with a ovary are other, scrambled are there other questions out there Is that a front here Gary I don't know where you are but oh my god. I covered everything. They don't have any questions. <laughs> yes, sir. Go ahead. You can stand up if you want or not. Whatever. It's up to you. Go ahead. Uh, Dr. Drew, I just have to thank you because I'm probably not the only one here, but uh, you did get me into therapy. Congratulations. So, cool. Um, <laughs> thank you. You live, Dr. Drew. Cheers. You're the best. Um, but I have to turn it around and ask Mike to retell yes. that uh, the most recent jizz disasters open forum oh <laughs> yeah are you talking about the, d- the dad that <laughs> the, the grandma yeah. the grandma then the dad yeah <laughs> right the rain bird oh the tanning bed that, that's a me jizz what? disaster no no not the tanning but the jizz disasters the rain bird the <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, the <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. this guy was like he was Go ahead, Drew. I, I I'll allow you to have some fun with this I one. I can't really remember the detail. I but, remember but the, in a nutshell, he got walked the pun. in on by, yeah. his, by his girlfriend. He was dad. a young man having sex with this young girl, and her father comes in the room, furious, angry. Strangely, while he's coming, he's about to blow a load. Dad comes in, just grabs him as if he's that's just a, screaming at him. Yeah, like, kill I'm going to kill you. Here. And he's and he's dragging him down the stairs, and Naked. this guy said he's just spraying load. <laughs> He starts ejaculating at all the walls, the balustrade, railings. Just. What are you gonna do? <laughs> I remember. Running, I remember. Uh, I remember. I remember right? uh, um, he ran into the neighborhood. He ran I remember into- an old Looney Tunes where I, I don't. Remember, I think it was Looney Tunes. Yeah, yeah. Where I remember. I, I don't. Th- I think it was like Speedy Gonzales or someone. It was a little character had a giant fire hose and they were gonna fuck someone up with it. And he went shh, and it because he was so little it like shot him all over the room. Yeah, yeah. That's all I'm imagining. He's like, no, please make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> When Arnold Schwarzenegger goes out into the Martian atmosphere in Total Recall, he goes, ah! Ah! It's coming! Ah! <laughs> you know, as long as we're telling stories, the other story that warrants a revisit is your Las Vegas story, as long as we're doing... Uh, I, was, I was giving Jillian an appetizer about that. Cause like, <laughs> I beg your pardon, Jillian. What was he doing to you? Yeah, I... Well, like... Okay, circling back around to what we were talking about at the beginning of the podcast, yeah. how there's certain things that it's like, I'll just throw it out there because everybody will laugh and it's like, oh, silly Mike used to do drugs and be yeah. an addict. Yeah. Then and, and, to be, and to be fair, you know, our reason for doing that is not to make light of drug and alcohol. Right. Because obviously, we take that very seriously too. But also to, to minimize shame and to humans are funny. We just are funny. Right. And even, even in our darkest hour, we, we're, we're laughably funny. Maybe painful, maybe consequence, maybe some shit that you're not so proud of. But ultimately, we, we all make mistakes. I, we all have. Stuff. I'm I'm really lucky that I don't have, uh, you know, because that's a big problem for addicts and alcoholics is is regrets. And I certainly have uh, like a boatload of shame. And telling this story doesn't help, but uh, I'll tell it anyway. Um, but I don't really have too many regrets because I was lucky. I was such an isolated user. I didn't. I wasn't someone who was prone to going out and getting in fistfights or or saying something. He, he would a- hang out with these weird murderers, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Drug dealing. What's murder. the statute of limitations on that one? You what? I said, what's the statute of limitations on that? Yeah, like, I should I even be talking? Uh, all right, so, <laughs> so, uh, but but the gr- regrets I do have are this story I'm about to tell, and I I always thought about this is going to sound so cheeseball, but I went I was lucky enough. Uh, Mad put together Mothers Against Drunk Driving put together a program I don't know like a decade ago. And they asked me to go to the Pentagon, and I was talking to a bunch of 
military guys. It was it was a joint group of mostly Navy and Marines, and uh, I was talking to them about how the 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 circumstances that you can get yourself in from just going out and having beers with the guys like yeah. it can actually the go way fucking wrong you yeah, know yeah, yeah. and a really wrong like your whole life's over yeah so I was telling you the story and as I looked out into this group of dudes I was probably 28 at the time and these most of them were like 19 20 21 22 and I was thinking of like how much they've accomplished and what they give back to the world already and me on the downside of things if I could go back in time, I probably wouldn't change anything because it wouldn't have allowed me to be the person I am. But at the same time, right. like there's no way I could have joined the military. No. And I would have been really right. good. Right. You know, I, I had everything going for me to be in the military, but I was a fucking loser. And so that's one main regret. The other is this story I'm about to tell you. <laughs> so I was in Las Vegas. This is uh, New Year's Eve. It was either 2002 to 2000. No, it's 2001 into 2002. Okay, so it wasn't the millennium, but it was the year after. Uh, no, 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 2001, 2002. So two years after. So I go to Vegas and we leave LA and we're driving. I, we start getting fucked up just driving to, by the time I get to Vegas, I'm on fire. We're eating, we're eating acid like it's, like it's Tic Tacs, <laughs> drinking. I, I had a big, um, like so a big so gulp thermos. So you were but I was, up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, I, but I was like, not like fun fucked up. I was like a vegetable by the time I got to Vegas. <laughs> and, uh, Everything's pretty much a, uh, a, a blur. And then this was like December 29, December 30. January 3, I wake up and my friend's like... Yeah, so, so five days are missing. Yeah, before or something. <laughs> so January, January 3, my friend wakes me up. He's like, hey, everyone's down at the buffet. Let's go down and meet you've him heard, for Sam, breakfast. you've not heard this story? Yeah. Oh, my God. This is horrible. I mean, this, I'm not, this is not I'm something I'm proud of. I, I made up for it a little. Um, so I go downstairs to go to the, to eat breakfast with people that are supposedly like my friends, and I see this long, almost like this table here, like a long, thin table with chairs all around, maybe twelve people. And I'm like, "Hey, dude, what's up? Hey, man!" And I, I say hi. Give you're high introducing. Five, you're introducing yourself. Give high fives to the people I know, and then I introduce myself to the people I don't. So I was like, hey, how are you? I'm Mike. She's like, oh, I'm Cindy. Oh, nice to meet you. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. And I get to this one girl in the middle of the table, and I go, hey, how you doing? I'm Mike. And she looks at me like, I, oh, oh, God. That, just the look on her face made me get shivers. Oh. And there's this pause. There's this pause. It was maybe one second, two seconds, but it felt like an eternity. And she just gets up and walks away. Apparently... Not only had I had sex with this girl numerous times in the past couple of days, but we'd been walking around Vegas holding hands, going on dates. <laughs> like going to dinner, hanging kissing out. Kissing at midnight on, the, on New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah. Exchanging pleasantries. <laughs> yeah. I was oh, horrible. Yeah. I, and and I, can't, I can't express to anyone. Like, I, I, honestly, it was as if meeting someone for the first time. I had oh. no, no recollection. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Mark, come on now. Don't applaud that. <laughs> All right. Where's that mic? Who's got the mic now? Gary, you still have it? Oh, it's here. You guys want to do a Stinky Pinky? Oh, okay. Yeah. He wants to do a Stinky Pinky. Oh, Stinky Pinky all, the, all day. I, I saw Rudy out back, by the way. He's coming in here. Oh, Rudy. Yeah, I think he's the same. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I want to do a Stinky Pinky first. He's good. All right. Go ahead. Let's hear it. Those of you who don't understand, explain. Stinky Pinky is a wordplay game. This is a love line thing. Yeah, where you, d- you try to stump Dr. Drew and I by describing... And KBC, we play it there, too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You just try, try to describe two words to us that rhyme. We know that the answer is two words that rhyme, but you can't use those two words in the description. So if Dr. Drew and I were going to play, I would say, hey, Dr. Drew, overweight feline. Fat cat. All right, Dr. Drew, how about a smelly finger? Stinky Pinky. Okay, so there you go. That's a- Here it is. All right, um, how about a spherical object found in a classroom... Mm-hmm. And an article of clothing that you would wear. Globe robe. Globe robe. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You have one, one more, one more, one more. <clears throat> Star Wars character and a dog of multiple breeds. So a. Jabba the Hut Mutt? Yeah. Jabba. Hut Mutt. Yeah, all right, Hutt I'll take mutt. that. I got one. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh. A guy who thinks he's like really buff. Is this a pink, stinky pinky? Yep. Okay. A guy who thinks he's really buff and cool, 
and a thing you melt cheese on at a Mexican restaurant. Douche. Nope. I, a, th- a thing you melt cheese on in a Mexican restaurant? Uh, That's crunchy. Macho nacho. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> All right, Gary, now you get that mic. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah, Rudy uh, was had a head of steam time because he's yeah. Not, no, I, he not, loves to he loves to be, like be face to face with people. I've really never does. seen him with an audience. He, well, before, he barely so. makes it out of Boyle Heights. You want you want to talk to Rudy? Well, let's see. Let, 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 one more. Wait, no way. Wait. Before wait wait before Rudy. Any more? One more question before we go to Rudy. Gary's out there running around. Come on, you guys. These lovely here we are here. Then we'll bring Rudy. This nice young lady right here. Explain to Rudy. You can talk about who Rudy is for the people that don't know. A friend of mine. Known him a long time. It's from Boyle Heights, California. Citrolo that makes no, no apologies for that. He spent a lot of time in the pen, but now he's trying to make his, he live his life on the straight and narrow for the sake of his family. Well, he spent time in the pen with a particular dude that took advantage of him. Yeah, but we've come to know that, that his cellmate, Trucha, um, <laughs> it was a mutual experience. I don't, I don't think Rudy... That's, was, he's experiences it that way. It's because he was so fucking traumatized. That's right. He has, he has Stockholm butthole. <laughs> and he's got... Of numerous kids now. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, and he's got uh, his wife. Oh, sad girl. Yeah, sad girl's just... wife. She's a real gem. Sad girl um, held the fort down during all those years in the past. She's an amazing woman. You know, you got all those kids, and she had to, she'd never worked in her life. She didn't graduate high school, and she had to pull it all together keep while Rudy's couple, gone. Gained a couple pounds recently. Yeah. So Rudy had to take matters into his own hands. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a sad story. Right. He, he meant so well. I know. Too. You know, she, sad girl. Was, do you, I mean, do you want Rudy to talk about this? Or do you no, want, I want oh. you to lay, lay it out for Rudy. Sad girl you. was gaining some weight, and um, she really didn't feel as sexy as she once was. No matter how much Rudy told her, he still found her the, yeah. to be the most beautiful woman in the world. She just didn't feel it. But she's not, you know, she's 48. You can't talk woman, about her fupa. And she's that, not, that she's not, not, she's not going to start exercising, you know. That's, that's, that's mas puto right there. And she's certainly not gonna. She's certainly not gonna like cut out gluten or something. So what Rudy did is he started uh, secretly sprinkling meth in her food, and uh, she lost 185 pounds. Yeah. But she, she got a meth psychosis. Yeah, along she the al- way. she also sawed off her own leg because there were bugs in it. So, so you she, take the good with the bad. So she she's only a one legged mom. Yeah, now. They, they call her peg leg. Sad, very sad. She's, yes, a, ma'am, she's pirate sad girl. Uh, Dr. Drew, could you talk about singing the national anthem at the Kings game? <laughs> I could talk a little bit about it. I mean, I don't know how interesting that is to anybody, except it was super duper intense. I mean, I didn't realize that, you know, when you go, they, ru- they run a red carpet out there, and so you go out in the middle of the ice, and, you know, these, these uh, the professional hockey players are gigantic, and they're on they're this high off the ground. On they, the, have, they have a foot and, stilt on, and too. And even the, even the refs, when they come out, they're going 85 miles an hour, and that's going on around you, and the spotlights are going, and they're showing pictures all over there. They're shining you know, videos onto the ice. It's just unbelievable. The, horn, the train horn's going off. <laughs> and, it, and you're standing out there like, oh, shit. And, By the way, Drew's used to singing opera, too, so this is like he's totally out of his element. Yeah. And, and then they, and then they, no, and then you'll have, I'm gonna sing as as it's scheduled, as it's scheduled. I'll be at Dodger Stadium on Labor Day or the day before or something. Nice. But 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 uh, they then they just go boom stop and they shine lights on you. Well, of course, as good luck, good fortune would have it, they're playing a Canadian team. Yeah. So uh, this little young lady sings the Canadian and just nails it. While I'm standing out there going, oh, By the way, most right. of those players, too, are like, cool, she sings O Canada, eh? That's good. <laughs> they're like, don't sing that bullshit Star Spangled Banner, eh? I know. They were, and, and the other thing was, and so they, and they announced me, and there's a lot of boo. And I thought, <laughs> no, no, and I thought, good. I thought, okay. And the, Twitter is going, you know, with, oh, it's going to be another Roseanne Barr thing, and who does he think he is? And after I sang a couple of bars, the, the, the room went silent. And I thought, oh, got it, got it. And so we went fine after that. So that was it. That was your moment, right? What? That was your moment. You're on the ice. You're like, I own these people. Yeah. Well, well, I'm Pomerotti. I, I brought them around is what I felt like. So, all right. So, uh, Rudy. Rudy. Rudy, come here, buddy. Rudy. Hey, what's up, dog? Hey, man. Hey, what's up? Who would like them? Hey, like a new couple bus boys, dog, that work here. That you hooked them up? Yeah, no, I, I knew those fools. Like, I saw them. I was like, hey, what's up, maniac? What's up, Luke? 
Hey, Lil Reaper, what's up, fool? And they're like, hey, no, I work here. I got the hooked up with this job. And Did so you get high with them? Uh, yeah, I got blazed in the other room. There's like... Upstairs? I mean, you know, there's a, roo- there's a whole roof thing outside. No, up- dog. I went up there like three weeks ago with... with three weeks ago? Yeah, what? with Brian Posehn and Joe Coy. You, know? oh. <laughs> you got high- Brian Posehn doesn't smoke pot anymore. No, he was just giving it to me, dog. I was like, hey... Uh, Tell me some stories about heavy metal, dog. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, hey, hey keep it coming, dog. <laughs> he's got some crazy weed, fool. Posein? Yeah, like he keeps it. He has like a kangaroo sack. A lot of people don't know that, oh, dog. Know. He puts like a big like Slayer shirt on, dog. Yeah, and then yeah. like he lifted it up. I was like, damn, fool. Like, it's not like a La Fanny pack. It's like a, like a, like a, it's Mar- like a rubber, you know. But like it's like, and then he just pulls little nuggets of weed, dog. Like, thank <laughs> Thank Yeska like that and like almost like it was in his belly button dog like lint you know when the hyenas get the lint you know in their hair really, slow down slow down mas peluda, dude. Mas dude, peluda slow down. in their fucking belly button dog okay man okay <laughs> slow down so where are your kids tonight uh little reaper number one are they, on, are they in bed? They no, they're at, uh, they're at uh, the bowling alley where they play all the lights and shit. Like oh, yeah. uh, you're at a rave. Yeah, yeah. Lucky strike. Lucky you strike, know what yeah. I'm saying? I used to smoke those back in the back in the day. How, how many of your kids are at the bowling alley? Uh, just two. Oh, two. So young ones? Yeah. They're how good. does Sagro bowl without a leg? No, she's not there, dog. Oh. No, uh, you cousin just left Lupe. Him there? Cousin Lupe, you know, little Misty. She took um. Oh, little Misty. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She she, does, she doesn't care. She like it on her like, iPad like this. Like go fucking bowl, dog. <laughs> So uh, how's your new, how's the job going? You've been good at Jamba Juice for a while. I'm about hey like um I'm a bre- I'm a break I'm gonna break this to you right now, dog. I'm really kind of proud of this. You good, know? Tell me, y'all looking at the new official assistant manager? Whoa, Rudy, the, Rudy, Rudy, man, good for you. Of la, of la Yamba Juice, La Yamba Juice in 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 Pacoima, dog. So hey, anytime you about those. Like, just come by. Like, just say, hey, Rudy, I was at that show at the Improv. I give you a special boost. You know, they have the fucking. <laughs> Mas puto boost, dog, like ginseng. Fuck that ginseng, dog. I put in like the, the hemp oil, fucking so whatever, la, dog. La, little, la Jamba Juice in Pacoima. Yayo. I thought you were working on the valley. They moved you. No, I'm, I'm a Pacoima now. It's yeah, so like a little, it's a little easier, dog, because, oh, you know, know, like there's like no language barrier. There's no right, like right. culture shock. You know what I'm saying, dog? So, so I, was t- I was telling these guys about your time in the pen. And you and I haven't talked about that in a long time. Uh, no, dog, let's uh, bring it up. Bad memories, dog. Well, like, Mike was you love to like uh, reopen the wound. You know what no, I'm saying? I, but listen, Mike was kind enough to share. It's a podcast. Mike was sharing his life stories, and I thought, you know, Rudy Cisneros, it's time to revisit. Mike's a bitch, by the way, dog. <laughs> Some of those stories, I'm like, Psh. he well, he said something about don't. Uh, what's that? He said he was talking about his putazos. I was like, yeah, right, dog. <laughs> yeah. I'll blast your dome right off your neck, like Jason Voorhees. You know, your putazos. Like, I'll let those putazos fly. Your fucking head be like a soccer ball, dog. No, I a, almost went pro, dog. I huh? was I was Golden Gloves, East LA, no 1979, dog. Whoa, dude! <laughs> so you went to the pen. What was it you first went in for? The first time? Yeah, I was uh, I was already old. I was like 11, and like it's <laughs> Grand Theft Auto. You know what I'm saying? Grand Theft. Yeah, I and, saw this Buick Regal on spokes. I was like, that's mine now. <laughs> Fucking tripping, dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so you you went in. The, I was the, there. I was there with uh, Cricket. You know Cricket. Uh, well, they, you have a couple crickets. Like, he used to slang all the, the he used to slang the Yale all over, dog. And uh, but when you back, call him cricket back in a- the day because he had a pager and it was always like beep, 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 and we're like, look at cricket fucking blowing up, dog. <laughs> but but cricket was eleven. Did he have a pager then? Yeah, but like he he was like old beyond his years, dog. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and so you were treated as fucking a fucking mustache. True, I got a. <laughs> it's true like hey they you know they do the 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 X ray on the babies. Yeah, dog. What they call that sonogram? Yeah. So I had a fucking Fu Manchu and a shaved head. I don't know how that happened. In the, in the sonogram. In the, I was, I was like, the damn. My, it was before my mom wow. passed, dog, I was looking. And I was like, damn, dog, look at that. Fool. So, I had dickies on. The umbilical cord was dickies. How'd you press that dickies? My umbilical cord was dickies, dog. It was, it was sick, fool. So, right, Holmes? So, so you're 11. They treat you as a juvenile. Then you have more trouble. When you went to the pen as an adult, what was that for? That was my third strike, you know, possession with intent. Oh, you know, really? Like, yeah, really? 16 years. I thought fool. you went in for, you hurt somebody. No, nah, no, nah, I'm not like that, dog. I mean, there were times where I had to, like, you know, the, 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 the handle my business, dog, you know. But that's just life. You know, it's like, 
It's like, you know, yeah. you can't be, you can't be like, uh, compromising my dignity. You know, yeah. I have to step outside no, and show you what's going on, boss. And straight so, chanclasa right to your dome, dog. So, putasos so, up in your neck. I fucking putasso your neck till it's jello. So, so you and, and Trucha, your roommate, now your skull cellmate. My you, the roommate. Mas puto, dog. It was a fucking frat house. <laughs> cellmate, your cellmate. I was in Chino, fool. It was a fucking cellmate. Okay, cellmate. And you, you had to uh, work in the kitchen with him or something? I worked that? in the kitchen. That yeah. was my job, dog. And the very first time, he just, like, he didn't say nothing. He's just like, hey, Rudy. And I went to turn around. He's like, don't look. And he put my head down in the rice. It's a big fucking, like, bags of rice, dog, you yeah. know? Yeah. And he just, he just went straight to town, blasted. Uh, he didn't take my pants off or nothing. Really? It was like, yeah, it was like his, hey, like, his dick was a bayonet or something. It was just... <laughs> Pogo st- I was pogo sticking off it. I was so, like, damn, so, dog. <laughs> bang, and bang. so, wait, hold on now. And so, what happened? Your what that, happened? No, I mean that went on for a while, right? Well, like you ended up kind of liking it. You know, like um, there's like that movie about those vatos who fly planes and they get shot down by the Japanese. Yeah. And then they're in like some crazy island where they make them live logs and shit. Yeah. You know, and they're like, they're being tortured because yeah. it's World War Nine or whatever yeah, fucking, yeah. you know. And like halfway through, he no, it's torture. And they're like br- trying to break him. Yeah, yeah. But it's right on the verge of when he's being broken as a man. That's where he really discovers himself. I, I remember I was getting like fucking kebab, you know, like with his, his pito. His pito was like out my mouth. I'm like, I was thinking to myself like, you know, like uh, life. <laughs> What's wrong, Drew? What are you laughing at, dog? What's so funny, fool? I'm trying to open up about my I'm pain. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry. Right, right, next, to, right next to my Raiders tattoo on my webo stock? Yeah. I got the clown face. You know, it says laugh now, cry later. Okay? I and right now, that right now, fool, I'm crying. Yeah. And it doesn't fucking make me feel good. I look no, over here like, ah! I'm good. I'm, good. I'm, I'm You know? Like... I'm, I'm with you, Rudy. I'm right here. Okay. I'm right here. I'm right what here. I'm saying is like... <laughs> no, so you were seeing the meaning of... You started to get into so it. So that's when I like, you know, I was pushed to the brink at that point, but I discovered a lot about myself, you know? Yeah. And I realized, you know, the game of life, it's an inside job, dog, you know? Everybody's worried about like, oh, look at my flight crease dickies. Oh, dog, I got this, I got the brand new Impala. It's like hopping pancake style. But like what's really important, dog, is what's inside. And, and because I had like, uh, you know, like thick veiny dong inside me... It, it almost, mouth. It it mouth almost then, like though. forced me to focus on inside, and I got way more introspective, and that's when I changed my life, and that's why I'm the assistant manager at the uh, Pacoima Jamba Juice, and I don't have to do no Caltrans. Right. Hey, I don't know if you noticed, I don't got no sunburn, no sunburn from Caltrans, dog. I don't have to do that shit no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was nice. Huh? Fuck that. Okay. <laughs> Caltrans. Okay, Rudy. Rudy. Uh... Okay. Thank you for sharing for sharing that with us. No problem, dog. Good story. All hey, right. you know what's crazy, dog? What's that? Dinosaurs. <laughs> they are crazy. for real, dog. Like they were all over, like big lizards. Well, Imagine if you were like fucking chilling, dog, and you're like, "Hey, what are you gonna do today? Oh, let's watch the Dodgers, all right, fool? Hey, you got a blunt? Hey, all right? Ah! And like a city bus, <laughs> yeah. like a city bus with wings. It's like, ah! So listen, I, it, it, dinosaurs reminds I'm me. I'm scared of, of chihuahuas, dog. Imagine on, a pterodactyl. I, I, I'm, I'm going to make you turn the mic over to someone hey, else. Hey, real quick, you're a doctor. Yeah. You like no science. Yeah. Do you think um, <laughs> did dinosaurs have mecos? Did dinosaurs have the the the, the, the semen? Yeah, they have mecos. They must have. Well, yes, they have to fertilize the. the. Oh damn, dog. Much makes you think, right? Yeah, you know, like not just veiny dongs make you think. No, nah, dude. Like I think about like dinosaur mechos sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I think, dog. You know, and I get reflective, and I think like you know what the reality is, is that there's really two things we need to focus on, dog. Right. Is that everybody in this world, no matter where they live, deserves to live a happy and fulfilling okay. life. I'm with you on that. I'm with you. And part two. Go Raiders, bitch. Okay. Thank you, Rudy. Rudy, the dinosaur thing reminded me of our friend Javier. I want you to hand your mic over to Javier if you wouldn't mind. He's walking around. Yeah, here he is. Here's Javier. Hey, man. Yes. Hey, hey Javier. Hey, Dr. Um, Drew. Is a, Dr. Drew, is a pleasure to ha- see Javier, it's always it's a, pleasure a pleasure to see you. See you. Ru- Rudy was getting a little... Uh, you know, I, <laughs> sometimes I see Rudy and I just want to laugh, but... Other so, times I look at him and I see that he has the energy, the spark, the light of yeah. life that I once had when I was a young man. So he was talking, 
He was talking about the meaning of life. And the meaning the of life. Let me tell you this, Dr. Drew. My grandma, God rest her soul, hi. My grandma, before she passed away, my abuelita would say that the truth of the world exists in el estomaco de la vaca. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you taught me that. And we, which stomach? The fourth one. The fourth stomach of the vaca. That's right. Because cows have four stomachs. The second stomachs. stomach is, is a meaningless chakra. The, f- <laughs> the third one is mostly about digestion. The fourth one, the truth of the life exists inside of the belly. Of course. And- That's right. Well, she said. What'd she say? She said. <laughs> so, and so, Javier, tell people about where you, you came up here. I have un- the largest ranch in all of what is. Yeah, right now, it is potential. The biggest ranch in all of Mexico, the Panocha Grande Ranch. It is near the border. I have many cows, and many cows. I do not do. Uh, now, I do not do like uh, in America. I'm disgusted when I drive my helicopter over the big ranch in America. I see the cows; they live in small pens, and they yeah. are tortured. It's gross. In, in, in Panocha Grande, they run free. Yeah. And when it is time, when it is time to perhaps make a steak, or perhaps make a nice leather cockfighting belt, or perhaps make a nice, a nice baseball glove. Yeah, I go. I say, cow, beautiful vaca, come to me. You, you tickle their balls? No, no, no. I no. say, come to me. And of course, because every single one of my millions of cows, has, I've been with them since they've been baby oh, yeah, cows. Of course. They, they trust me. I yeah, say, yeah. look in my eyes. I'm going to give you a kiss on your mouth. Uh-oh. And then I will put a sword deep in your spine well, so you that you sword. can get back to the circle of life. Okay. All right. And, and You've so, had a good life, cow. No. Now, in addition to the, the – was the meaning of life in the fourth stomach? The truth of our truth life. Of life. There was another meaning thing with the moon or something that you taught me once. That's How, right. How does that work? <laughs> there was a, It's the – The la luna something in the luna. The I, energy. The energy of purity uh, and the honesty of a man's soul. Okay. Can be seen through the light of the moon. Okay. Okay. Right. right My right. mom told me that before she died. I see. My mom died in a Mexican wrestling accident in 1979. Wait a minute. I thought your Strong. wife died in a wrestling accident. No, no, no. My wife was trampled by wild boar. Your mom? Your wife died in a wrestling no, accident. No, 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 no. It was a terrible accident okay. in the coast of Mazatlan. My wife, she uh, was trying to take these bulls down to a wealthy businessman. For some reason, he found it funny to have cows in his house. And, and next thing you know, they got scared and they just went crazy and they trampled my wife. I she see. became a pancake. And, and, and your mom then died in a wrestling match. That's right. I see. They camel clutch. She. she <laughs> Underground rules. There is no whole no bar. You got to understand. In, was it the Iron Sheik that did it? The Iron Sheik was, the Iron Sheik was trying to make some extra money on the side during the, his heyday, and he, he came down to Mexico to wrestle my poor mama. Some, yeah, and uh, she, he snapped her neck. It was very vicious. I see. I see. Well, Javier, I, I just thought you'd come in and share some of your wisdom with our audience. I've never seen you in front of people before, and it's yes. good to have you. I want I to appreciate- say one more thing before I go. In the words of the great American poet, Belle Biv DeVoe, never trust a big button a smile. That girl is poison. And you're going back to Pinocchio Grande tonight? I would fly in my helicopter. I, par- I put it on the ceiling. I know. If anybody want to ride in my helicopter, it's fine. It yeah. may not be a Leonardo DiCaprio's yacht, but I do what I can, you know, I say. Leather everything. A, oh, leather, yeah. a leather helicopter. It's leather helicopter. <laughs> leather and denim helicopter is beautiful. Except that big metal, was it a license plate on the it front? It cow horns on the front see, with right, a rooster yeah. on the side. Okay. A rooster you, is, I, I do yeah, appreciate you coming snake in, in his by. mouth. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Good to see you. Uh, if, if I get my Catherine back, it'd be great. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, hey, hey man. Woo, Javier and Rudy. Wow. What's going on over here? Uh, just a little visit from the boys, you know. Rudy especially had a, had a scene. Oh, Rudy. Rudy. Uh, I, I think he's a performer at heart. I think he Rudy, is. Rudy, he just uh, he loves getting in front of the crowd. He really soaks it all up. There was so many, <laughs> so many other things for him to get into, and yet he was just busy performing for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I well, what other stuff could he have gotten into? I mean, I kind of caught most of it. <laughs> he's talking about ruptured buttholes and <laughs> giving his wife mad. Kind of got yeah. most of it. You're right. All right, other 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 callers, as we call you guys here. Any other questions? Yes. Why don't you get the mic here? Yes. 
We are running low on time here, too. Yeah, I know. Right there, right yep. there. King of Glendale. As, as Gary says, eat that mic. <laughs> oh, there we uh, are. Uh, you guys both live. Yeah, you live. You live, sir. <laughs> um, Mike, I heard you, it must have been last week on K Rock, um, and you were talking about death by poop. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. the way you would want to die. What? So, uh, <laughs> well, no, I. Well, <laughs> They were doing a replay. I think Kevin and me were on vacation or something, and they were doing a replay of my Coachella story where I damn near died from taking a shit. <laughs> and uh, I was saying, like, all things considered, even though it was mysterious and we never got to the bottom of why I lost consciousness oh, and yeah. smashed my head against oh, the sink. Oh, that's right. I forgot about this. If I had to go, like, sign me up, you know, like Elvis style. It was just like, I'm sorry. My, my, my colon knew that that was my touch. That was my coup de grace. That was your moment. It's time for me to descend it here. There's, it's well, only going to... Sketch the story. Uh... Drive to Coachella to go see Guns N' Roses uh, with the wife. We got a, uh, her mom to come down from Seattle to take care of Magnolia. We get in the car. We drive up there at Friday night. Get there. Fine. Good night's sleep. Wake up. Um, sipping on coffee. And I tell my wife, I don't feel too good. But that's pretty common. Like, she's not f- stressing it because I'm always, you know, giving her my, my sob story. So I go to the bathroom, and I'm like, no, babe, uh, this is not good. I, I'm clammy. I can't see straight. And she's like, okay, honey, well, you know. Whatever. Uh, yeah, maybe take a shower. And I get up off uh, the toilet. I'm now, at this point, fully naked because I got so tired of taking my pants off. I mean, I was really. You had diarrhea for a while. Yeah. And, I, and I'm like, honey, I don't. And I just fall straight back and smash my head against the sink. Ugh. And I wake up in uh, a, an ambulance. And the guy's like, uh, you know your name? I was like, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I have, I, you know, I have my little dick just poking like a, like, a, like a baby chick out of this towel. Out of this baby, like this towel. And it's just poking his little head. And, I was, and I've got poo smeared on me. And I'm like, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a true story. I'm all, my, name's, uh, my name's Mike. And he's all, Mike Catherwood? <laughs> Really? No kidding. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, it is. It's like, yeah, you live, man. Uh, yeah. That's very funny. Death by poo. The EMTs and paramedics were probably telling stories. Yeah, they're, they're, that's all over the Palm Springs area. A, not only the, the diminutive nature of my penis, but also that I play in, in poo poo. Mike's live again. Who wants it next? I think you have a friend who wants to talk to you guys. All right. Hi, Jillian. Jillian Barbary, big yeah. fan. You live, you live. You, you both live. live. I just <laughs> want to put some things into perspective. When we both started at KBC, Dr. Drew, I've known for 25 years. Mike, I really didn't know outside of Kevin and Bean, and I knew you were on Dancing with the Stars for like... Yeah, not for very long. Okay, so... But you looked great. And so Thanks. when I talked to Dr. Drew about Mike, he, he said, you might want to think about giving him your number because the shit that he sends, literally, he's like, it's pretty dark. It's from the dark web. And I go, I don't know what the fuck that is, but I'm no, down. It's, no, it's, yeah, she goes, what's the dark what's web? What's the dark web? I don't know all about I showed, that. Her, oh, I showed wow. her very quickly. Yeah. So it's yeah. interesting to me that, because there's a whole theme of you Ooh. and shit. Yes, there is. The, the videos and Sam Shocker, whom I love, is here from, you know HLN. You know the pictures he sends. So... So Drew said, be prepared for what you're about to see. And I've given birth. I mean, I've, I've shat on the table. I was sliced open. Babies came out. I, I don't even know what the fuck happened. But anyway, they stitched me up and life was, was good. With Mike. Yeah. And I said, I can handle anything until I saw the pictures. So when you said to me, uh, <laughs> I want to watch fucking boils being opened and excised. Who cares? You watch men shit in each other's mouths. Yeah, it's true. I win. You are depraved. No, I, and I oh, yeah. love that about you. <laughs> there's no there's no doubt about that being true. <laughs> so uh, I'm just really curious where that, that comes from because I know some of these stories and I don't know them in their entirety like you told them tonight. Um, you have had, obviously, an incredible life and Dr. Drew's been a big part of it. Oh, yes. But um, I just, I'm really curious how you separate the two now. How do you... Uh, my love for poo or, and being like a straight, like a normal human being? Yeah, because you're completely sober. You're dedicated oh. to your wife. You love your daughter. But you have this really, um, in, uh, part of you, a big part of you loves this. And is it because you want to live di- vicariously through the dark web or what? No, it, it probably is. First off, I get... Yeah, I, I can't even begin to describe to you guys, and it may seem silly. I can't begin to describe to you how much joy I get out of knowing that 
at some time during the day, Sam Shocker or Jillian or Dr. Drew or Dr. Drew's wife or s- someone will be walking around going, oh, like, I can't, I can't at all explain how, like, it's like overwhelming joy that I get out of it. But so here's the thing, here's the thing. I, I want to be able to bring you that joy, yeah. okay? And your wife is, that's, your wife is right. That's yeah. what she said, the reason you did it. But why the F do you have to have us respond to them then? I just want to, <laughs> just, uh, to erase it and move on, have my reaction. I react, w- well done. Yeah. But I don't want to have to go, oh, Mike, how cute. That was so much fun. Uh, I Poor guess. Sam has to send his eyes, and you could put us on a chain, so yeah. I have to see her responses too. Yeah. <laughs> well, Sam's husband, like an idiot, started open the floodgates this morning for no reason. He's like, "Here's a here's a mutilated dick for you," and I was like, "Okay, you want to play rough? I'm going right to 4chan." I just opened up the floodgates. It was insane. I also I also think that like like you said when I was busy really focusing on, 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 a, on a more serious note. When I was busy focusing on really uh, insignificant things like getting high, getting drunk, um, dangerous sexual activity, anything that would kind of pacify me on a very immediate sense, I would never have the time of day or like the, the clarity of mind to spend any time with actual nonsense. You know what I'm saying? Like my ni- my life was so f- chock full of real nonsense, like real dangerous, time consuming, life eroding nonsense that I, I I didn't think to like. Well, I wonder what why these dudes in Germany are eating poo. Um, <laughs> but now I like you. It's crazy. Like I'm so. La- I'm, it's like uh, I'm laser focused on these things intermittently throughout the day, and in between these little intervals of like putting my daughter to bed, going to work, reading the paper, whatever it may be. It's like. <laughs> What? Why? This the thing. This this internet thing is terrible for a guy like me with idle hands. Yes, it, you know. I think it is Jillian. Some yeah. part of him that used to be all of him. Yeah. That still remains within him that needs some attention now. I and agree. Then. And sometimes the pictures that you send, it takes me a second. I'm like, and I'm not a prude. I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and then I'm like, oh wow, it's stuff that I've never even. Jillian, and, but was, Jillian was asking earlier today at, at the radio station if, like, she's like, don't people die from eating poo? And I was like, if that was the case, there'd be no Germany. Because, <laughs> I mean, the, the, the country would just f- Wait, slowly it, fall off. Like, like at the end of Back to the Future when he's looking at the picture and people are just, like, disappearing. <laughs> you just look at a map of Germany and be like, whoa, what's, oh, my God, everybody's dying from Bay poo. Day. Explain what? It's because you get most of your your shit literally off of the German dark web. Yeah, yeah I don't, I'm not so positive that they're always German. I think it's just become like the comedy thing. So they say it. It's like German, German Shiza boy. I, I feel the need <laughs> I, to clean. He's probably in like Wisconsin. I feel the need to do, do like three minutes on addiction here just to cleanse the palate. Please, please have at it. Because, because there's, there's. Let's uh, talk about drug addiction to cleanse the palate. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's it, it, you, we were talking an awful lot about you doing things that you wanted to do but weren't pleasurable anymore. Right, and uh, it's a great example of how the disease of addiction affects your brain. That we have a liking system, a pleasure system, a hedonic system, and we have a wanting system in our brain. They're different, and the wanting system. I mean, you initially do drugs because they're pleasurable. How long before they weren't really pleasurable? A couple of years at the yeah. most. At the most. Yeah. It, it, or what you do is then you become a poly user, and then you, well, once, you, the point once is, snorting became you're, no you're, fun, you smoke cocaine. Then, co- then you have to smoke meth. And then after that... Then but you're all the while trying to find pleasure. And sure. And that something is no, not pleasurable and really no longer pleasurable. Right. I mean, you rarely get any pleasure out of it. But the wanting system, the part of this that says, that says do that again, is what's really disordered and just happens yeah. no matter what. Well, and, and when they, they've implanted these things, the electrodes, into people, mm-hmm. they, believe it or not, in that same region... And there's one famous case. The guy had the gene for addiction, and he just pressed the lever until he got exhausted. He couldn't stop. And it also, I guess because you were talking about the, uh, the dangerous sexual activity, it also made him have this intense desire to masturbate. No. At the same... What? Yeah. I hear that. <laughs> so, you see what I'm saying? I hear that. And, and, so, and so this wanting system gets really jacked up in addiction, and even when it's not pleasurable anymore, you just have to repeat these behaviors. Well, I mean, that, and that's when it gets really dark. Uh, I'm sure there's people in this room that, uh, or listening to the podcast that have this experience, and that's when it truly becomes the most just life-crushing is that you, the, this wanting system, yeah. you know, for, from a, a simpleton's way of describing it, it's like your heart 
tells you you want drugs and alcohol badly, your brain, you intellectually know you don't want it. Like, right. you're like, this isn't even going to be fun it, or enjoyable. It's like starting a crack. I don't have enough money, but I have to go do this. It's like starting a crack binge. You know the first hit you're going to feel pretty good, but you know in two days you're going to be looking in the mirror wanting to cut your eyes. Oh, it's worse. Thinking the FBI is outside. I've always said... Cocaine at 5 p.m. is the best thing in the world. Cocaine at 5 a.m. is the worst thing in the but, world. But, the, but knowing that, well, then wouldn't you stop around 9.30? I'll just, it'll be easy. I'll just get, yeah. I'll get an A-ball. I'll be fine. By around midnight, I'll go home. Right. Take, that, a, take a It can't happen. Soma. Because, because the wanting system takes over and just drives you until you're gone. Yeah. And that's how that works. So does, is that what you wanted to hear me? You were saying talk more about addiction? Okay. Uh, let's. We got to wrap up pretty soon here. Any, Jillian, thank you for asking us. Yes, to, thank uh, you, Jillian. Participate here. Any other last minute questions? It's always good to get audience interaction with these kinds of events. You guys are. Oh my God. Sam, oh, Sam, Sam shocker, get everyone. Um, come on up here, Gary. I'm very impressed by Dr. Drew packing the house with great a poontang. <laughs> Jillian, Lisa Guerrero's here. Drew's wife, Sam. Thank you, yeah. Mike. Uh-huh. Uh, I want you, Mike, to. Uh, repeat a story that you once told me the Uh-oh. difference between your fan and your wife's fans and and if you know Mike's wife is a is a TV star is an actress a TV star an actress but just, sweet I, as can be and Sam I've never heard this story before I'm totally oh, you I'm totally fascinated is this, no. is this was you were walking the streets of Venice yes okay okay please continue okay. this this is it's real good. this it's is simple. not like it's this simple is not, but it's good this is not made up for a script this is not embellished this is 100% real my wife and I live in Venice Beach uh, and we were walking uh, this is before Magnolia we were walking the dogs and um, <laughs> we were on Abikini has all these nice boutiques and stuff and uh, these like nice family comes up and they're like we watch Rules of Engagement all the time we just love you it's our favorite show can we take a picture with you and like the sweetest family they're yeah. f- visiting from somewhere my wife takes pictures with them and I'm like, hey, I'm the husband. Yeah. <laughs> we walk back to our house, right? Put the dogs inside. I take the trash. I'm, I'm, we just get home. I let the wife in. I take the trash out to walk to the side of the house and there's a guy pissing on my house. <laughs> I'm not exactly... Like, the wall that separates the alleys of the canals of Venice and my home is right here. And this dude's like this. Ugh. Oh. I'm all, hey, 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 dude, dude, what are you doing? He turns around and he goes, Psycho Mike! <laughs> What's up? Hey, hey, buddy. Puts a fine point on it. Yeah. Well, listen, we got to wrap this up. I want to thank KBC for helping sponsor us here today and yeah, for being Thank you so much. It's been, a, it's been a really a pleasure for Mike and I to work for Drew Hayes and the KBC team. We thank them all for giving us a chance to do the, the sure. video show. We're followed by Jillian and John. Jillian, thank you for supporting us. And Lisa and my wife were here. Emily Moore, Sex with Emily's here. We have lots of... <laughs> well, and, and also, look, today in, in 2016, with so much for you to do and so much amazing TV and everything, the yeah. idea that you guys would take time out of your week to drive out here and see us just to, for that, I mean, that is so over-the-top meaningful to Drew and I. Yes, I just, it, we can't thank is, you enough. And, so, and also... Uh, we feel very – we didn't really talk about Loveline very much tonight, but we feel indebted to the Loveline audience. And those of you that are Loveline fans, we want to stay connected. We miss you too. We, we kind of want to find a way to – that's why I was pushing so hard for, for questions because that's what we miss is that interaction. So I, maybe we'll do some more of these here and there. And just I try love it. Try <laughs> these. This is a lot more, we have a lot more stories. We have a lot more to talk about. If we travel the country doing these, can we share stalls like you and Adam used to do? Stalls? You oh, share no, urinals, urinals, you know, sure. because I want to see that hog you yeah. got. I know you're interested. Corolla's like, eh, you should see it. It's, it's really insulting. It's how big. Drew's got everything. And so... And you so thinking about we, something, Drew? You thinking about something down there? What's it? No, what he said was, he said was, he goes, that's pretty good. I don't know if you're thinking about something or what. But. <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted we want to get that interaction back, and we thought that maybe a live thing might be an interesting way to do that. And so bring your question things. Bring, we'll do some more of that. Yeah, we would love to do that. We miss you too. We miss, but we we you know what. Live Tyler. Tyler. Oh, what Panama. <laughs> Drew wasn't even there that night when that fucking maniac called. She's like, my name is Besos de la Luna, and I am from Panama. And I was like, so for no reason, I decided to sing the refrain from Van Halen's Panama. Every time, 
And every time I'd say it, she it would remind her that she was, in fact, Panamanian. So she'd say Panama again. Next thing you know, I can't fucking talk the next day because I was doing a David Lee Roth recreation. Panama! Panama! Uh, well, I'm sure we have other people to leg. thank. Thank the improv. And uh, again, hopefully we can do this again some... A what? A meet and greet? Yeah, we'll hang around for it. So, and, uh, yeah, meet and greet? There's a meet and grope, I believe. That's right. what I was told. So, for the podcast <laughs> listeners, we'll see you next time. And for the you guys yeah, here, thank, thank you. you very much for having us. Thanks so fun. This is Corolla Digital. Stay tuned for the latest AP News headlines from Podcast One right after this. When shopping for car insurance, consider this. GEICO has been saving people money on car insurance for over 75 years. So if you're serious about savings, it's simple. Go to GEICO.com. After 75 years, they know how to save you money. AP Update. I'm Carlotta Bradley. Golfer Jimmy Walker is this year's PGA Championship winner. He says he was self-assured with the tournament on the line. I felt confident in myself. I felt confident in what I was doing. I felt confident in my golf swing, my putting, chipping. And I just kind of tried to wrap myself around that, that everything was feeling good and to go with that. He says it was a challenge playing 36 holes on the last day of the tournament. It was a test today. It really was. You know, it's tough walking, soft and wet and nasty, and, it, you know, it just kind of wears on you. It was nice to have the long break in between the rounds. The win in Springfield, New Jersey, is his first major championship. Because of rain, the 36-hole final was the longest in PGA championship history since 1952. Jason Day finished second. AP Update, I'm Carlotta Bradley.